therefore don't do social media because you don't want to be like that putsy guy that's like talking about his lunch every day. Who cares? If you come at it from asking a question that's very simple, how can I help? And I don't mean how can I help transform your life with one tweet, but it's what's my audience thinking about and what's useful and helpful to them, even if it's just making them smile because you're sharing a funny YouTube video or making them laugh because something amusing happened to you and you're talented enough to capture it in a short tweet. Or maybe it's something simple like shining a light on someone else. I've seen a lot of you tweeting here at the ECMAs. You're not tweeting about yourself. You're saying things like, congratulations to David Miles for winning best album. You're saying congratulations to Dave Gunning for winning producer of the year. Yay, I'm out and I'm seeing music and it's touching and moving and inspiring me. And you're not talking about yourselves. You're talking about the experience that you're having. And that's helpful to all of us because it takes us on a journey with you. That's good engagement. That's perfect marketing. And especially for Canadians who are humble and don't like to talk about themselves, and that's a whole other seminar. But um, it's really easy for you to do that, right? You're in a great community of incredible artists. There's no week that I see more music on any time of my year than here because it's it's that good. So it is good. That's why I love coming here. It is. Music versus marketing. I think this slide here is the exact reason why musicians fall down when they're marketing. Your music should be spontaneous, it should be creative, it's coming from a place of you at your highest self, otherwise you would not choose this as your path. I also don't believe incredible talent can be learned. You got it or you don't got it. You can hone it, you can practice it, you can take lessons from amazing people, but the baseline for everything we're talking about is having the gift. Your marketing is the exact opposite. It's systematic and scientific. It's learnable, people. That's the cool thing about it. Right? Great talent, not so learnable. Tweet Twitter, give me 20 minutes. So that's, that's the good news, that's the good news. And I didn't know how to market well, I was just a passionate kid that started a little PR firm because I wanted to see music every night and couldn't figure out how to justify that, so I made a job out of it. And I learned how to be a great marketer. If I can do it with zero musical talent, you can do it. Next slide, please. So here's what most musicians do online. They use MySpace and Facebook and Twitter um, less MySpace these days because of the disaster that it's turned into. But we use social media platforms for communicating things. There's sporadic communication with no plan or goals and no products. We use BCC in an email program when we're trying to communicate with our gold, our fans. Who here has a newsletter that they have like a newsletter list of email addresses? Who does not? Out of those of you that do have a newsletter list, how many of you are using your email program? Your Hotmail, your Gmail, your Yahoo, and you're putting the, e the addresses of your fans in the BCC? Terrible mistake, I'll tell you why. It's because A, it's illegal, <laughs> and B, it's not trackable. Next one. The other thing artists do is they ask for money before building any value. And this is something that happens online and offline. And Tom can talk about where this crops up in a live music experience. And it makes an audience go like this. If they're behind their computer or if they're in, this, in the audience, it's not good. What I mean by ask for money before building value in a social media or an online context is simple. Someone books you to go play a gig. You've got to get bums in seats because that's your responsibility. You go, oh, I better send an email. I better, I better post this on my Facebook. I better put this on my Twitter. I better get the word out. And so, you know, you put the word out. Hey, come see me. I'm playing. It's 10 bucks. It's Tuesday night. It's 1045. Come. What you're not realizing is you're actually being really salesy towards your audience. They haven't heard from you in weeks or months. They don't know what you're up to. They don't know what you're thinking. And then you show up like a used car salesman. North America is the most sales resistant part of the world. We hate being sold to. 
you know, you go into a store and that guy's like a little bit too over ambitious with asking you if you need help, and you're like, ew, I went in there and you just tried to sell me. <laughs> yeah. It's not like that in other parts of the world. Selling is a negotiation, it's a game, it's an art. Does anyone ever go like to the Middle East or to Europe and that guy wants to sit down and negotiate with you and you're horrified by it? Because we're, we're from a sales resistant society. However, we are the biggest consumers in the world. We love to buy. And advertising, we've been conditioned to believe that certain things and products and goods and services are relational to our lifestyle. And so if that advertiser can hit you in the right spot, you'll buy. You'll buy a BMW because it makes you sexy. You'll buy a, a, a Volvo because it makes your kids safe. You'll buy something that reflects your lifestyle because it's an expression of who you are. Next slide, if you would. Can you talk a little bit about when a band comes up on stage and they start to sell before they have the engagement of the audience and, and where a misstep can occur in a live music contest? Define the sell on stage. Um, where I have a problem, honestly, and this is a great example, this event, but um, I do this everywhere. I, and I probably teach 20 workshops in a year uh, around the world. And every, everywhere you go, you guys are passing out cards, flyers, banners, posters. I'm playing here, this is playing here, this is playing there. You're trying to get people out, which is cool. And, and awfully, uh, a lot of good artwork and a lot of good stuff and a lot of good stuff. But then when I go see the shows, I don't know how to explain this. And you may think I'm arrogant, but they're just, they're just okay. And now let me say this, the music is better than okay. That's the thing that attracts me. Because if I close my eyes, in fact, I got the new, I think I got a new reality TV show where people aren't watching the singers. And, and that's the problem. You think people aren't watching you. <laughs> or, or, but 55% but of communication from the stage is what the audience sees with their eyes. So what do they see when you're standing on the stage? I'll tell you what they see. The same thing over and over, song after song. I mean, dude, you're quirky. I saw you last night. Awesome. But we need to change pressure. We need to change pressure on audience. I don't care how good. You're sitting there, we had a meal last night, and I had this awesome steak. But after seven bites of the steak, I want something else. I need to go to the potatoes. I need to go. I've got to be just as creative. I've just got, I've got to be just as creative with my show now as I do with my music. And, it's, and you guys think by going out and just going on stage and bringing it, you're being, you're, bringing, you're being spontaneous. No, you're not bringing it. You're winging it. And, and you hope something works. And I'm telling you right now, every... This is... Unless you've seen what I do... Every one of you can raise your show up at least a notch or two. Now the question is, are you willing to make that commitment just like this? To me, if you make the commitment to two, these two things, I have never seen a career not, I, I can't promise you'll be a star, can't promise you'll make millions, but I can promise you will get more gigs, sell way more merch, and you can start developing a career uh, just between being great online and great live. The problem is we have for years spent our time thinking the priority is recording. In fact, it's perfect. I'm standing there. Or no, practicing. Or practicing. Or rehearsing. Yeah, exactly. Well, I can't rehearsing the songs over and over again to get them tighter. Penny for every artist that said, I just want to rehearse. I just want to play, man. Okay, great. Go lock yourself in your yep. house and play. Musical masturbation. And, and I get it. Like, you didn't sign up for all this stuff. You didn't. When you decided to live the dream of a musician, whether or not you have a day job, whether or not you play once a year or 300 times a year, you did not sign up for, ooh, let me make a Facebook page and then yep. friend people and, oh, take photos and tweet my lunch. And this is not what you signed up for. And that's... That's not fair. I don't think this, any of this is fair, by the way, and I'm the pod piper for all this stuff. 
I don't love that I have to do it either to keep my business going, but my dream is to be in front of you. So I better tweet really well so that I get invited again.